Hello calculus students. Let's do some practice with our test prep questions for 6.1. Now not all of these are going to be on implicit differentiation but several of them are. Uh, you know I was thinking this time when I went through these problems I got one of them wrong and uh, then when I saw what the right answer was I thought oh that's how you do this. And so just as a reminder you're, you need to try to do these on your own so that when you get them wrong then you can see how to do them correctly later. It does help with your learning. Okay so let's get going on this first one. So we're trying to just find the derivative. So we to start off with this thing here and we take its derivative. The derivative of x is 1 plus now sine y, the derivative of sine is cosine y, but now we multiply it by the derivative of the inside which is going to be y prime or dy dx. You could write dy dx right there if you want. I'm just kind of being lazy with my y prime. And then equals, now the derivative of natural log of y is 1 over y times the chain rule, the derivative of y is just y prime because this is with respect to x. Okay, so now what can we do? We're going to solve for y prime. So as I manipulate this, get everything on, get the y primes on one side. So let's see, I'm going to have, I'm going to bring this over to the left side. So I will have cosine y, y prime, minus 1 over y, y prime, equals negative 1. So I subtracted the 1 and brought it over. And we factor on a y prime. That gives us cosine y uh, minus 1 over y equals negative 1. And then that leads us to what that y prime equals negative 1 over cosine y minus 1 over y. Okay, so this is what y prime equals. This, this is the answer. The problem is none of these match that. And so what I've tried to tell my students is that when you're working through these problems, how do you know when to stop? Because they're always wondering, well, when do I stop? When is it simplified? It's simplified, or it's the right answer, when you can manipulate it into one of the multiple choice answers. So we've just got to keep going. It doesn't even look like it's even close to one of these, but uh, the good news is that we have only a cosine, so that's nice, and we don't have any x's. So I will tell you the way you do this. We need to get rid of this little fraction here, this 1 over y, because you can see none of these answers have a 1 over y. So if I multiply the entire denominator by y, I distribute it through, then I would also have to multiply the numerator by y. I come down here, I still am going to have my fraction that's negative, so I have a negative all over the 1 times y is y, and then I distribute the y to both of these, so it's going to be y cosine y minus and then 1 over y times y is just a 1. Okay this looks a lot better. Now I'm starting to look like one of these things. This 1 minus cosine y, y cosine y plus 1. It's really close to one of them. So now what do I do? I take this negative and distribute to there and distribute to there. So then it's going to become a positive 1 minus y cosine y and that's why it's this answer right there. Number two, we're looking at how many critical values does f have. So we're going to have critical values uh, when the derivative does not exist or when, so when the derivative uh, does not exist or when the derivative equals zero. So the derivative does not exist. The only place this thing doesn't exist is when x is 0. So this happens when x equals 0. But if you look on the interval, it says the open interval from 0 to 10. So x equals 0 is not within the interval because we're not including 0. So we only need to check when f prime equals 0. So you just take the, deri the derivative, graph it, and you're going to look and see when you're going to look and see when does this graph cross the x-axis. So the derivative graph, how many places does it cross the x-axis? And it's going to do something like this. But if you, it, it's going to zoom really, really close, and you can't really tell if it's crossing or not. So my recommendation, the x min and x max is right there. The x min should be 0. The x max should be 10. But for the y values, you want to shrink down the y values. I would go from a negative 1 to a positive one on the y min and y max, that should help you see very clearly what the graph is doing. I already took a look at this and that's what I did to be able to see it. If you don't zoom, zoom in close enough, it's hard to tell when it crosses. Number three, 
this is the one I missed when I first did this. So let's see, I'll show you what I did and then why I stopped too soon and didn't get it right. So we're trying to figure out the number of points on this curve where the tangent line is horizontal. So I'm looking for that. That's my important thing here. Tangent lines are hor horizontal when the derivative, or in other words, in this case, dy dx, when that equals 0. So let's find dy dx, set it equal to 0. So the derivative of this is going to be 2x plus 8y and then y prime, or dy dx, equals, and then the derivative of 16 is 0. Make sure you put a 0 there, not 16. So if you manipulate this and solve it, you're going to, I'm going to come down here and say that y prime equals, so I'll subtract a 2x and then divide by the 8y, or in other words, that can simplify to negative x over 4y. So now remember, we're looking for tangent lines being horizontal. So we set the whole thing equal to 0. And when you solve that, the only possible time is going to be when x equals 0. So that's what I thought the answer was. It's at x equals 0. Now that doesn't mean that the answer is 0. It's how many t points on the curve do you have a tangent line? I thought immediately, I thought, ah, just at x equals 0, there's only one. So boom, there's the answer. And then I looked up the answer, and the answer is 2. It's not 1. So I was like, what? What did I do wrong? And then realize, oh, that's because if you look at this thing, x equals 0, if you plug in a 0 to solve for y, so let's do that, 0 plus 4y squared equals 16, because then we can know where the, exactly where the coordinate point is. So when you solve that, you get y squared equals 4, or y equals plus or minus 2. There's two separate y values. So that was because... The shape of this is actually an ellipse. You didn't have to know that. But this y equals plus or minus 2, there's two coordinate points, 0, 2, and 0, negative 2. That's why there are two points. Number 4, they're giving us the graph of f prime. We're trying to find the original graph. Now, usually we do it the other way around. Like, here's the original graph and which one's the derivative. So it might be a little bit hard to like fully understand how to do this one. But here's my hint. The derivative is always positive here. See that? It is positive. It's positive, but it's barely positive. And then again, it's positive almost 0. Almost 0. OK, I'm writing that down so I remember right there. It's really close. So that means the original graph, uh, here it's almost 0 too. So the original graph would be over on the left side, almost flat. On the right side, almost flat and then here, but it's positive. But it will the slope is always positive. So look at this. That's negative slope. Can't be that one. This has negative slope. Can't be that one. This has negative slope. Can't be that one. And this has negative slope. Can't be that one. All of the slope should be positive because the derivative is in the positive y values. This is the only one that's positive the whole time. Last problem. It has a calculator here. Because uh, I, I, I pulled this one from a, a, a practice exam that was allowed a calculator on this problem, but you actually don't need a calculator, but it is a bit confusing with what is going on. So let me walk you through this. I won't do the whole thing, but I'll at least show you how to set this one up. Um, so what are we looking for? We're looking for the second derivative when the point is x equals 2. Now I can see right away, when I take the second derivative, I'm going to have a bunch of y values in there and a bunch of, and the dy dx is when I take the second derivative. So I first need to figure out what does y equal if x equals 2. So I'm going to take the original function right here and plug in a 2. So 2 cubed plus 2y equals 8. And then so this is 8 subtracted over here. I get 2y equals 0. So y equals 0. So that's an important thing for me to keep track of because I'm going to have to plug in the x equals 2 and y equals 0. The next thing is, what is dy dx equal? What does dy dx equal at the point 2 comma 0? So if I plug that coordinate point in, then the derivative at that exact moment is negative 3 times 2 squared minus a 0 all over 2. And then that equals negative 
12 over 2, which equals negative 6. Okay, so there's another important thing. The derivative, the dy dx, is negative 6. So now, when you take the second derivative of this thing, I'm going to now do this down here, I'm going to have to do quotient rule. I have what's on top and then what's on bottom. So I have the top one, the first thing's derivative is negative 6x minus, and then the derivative of y is my dy dx, or y prime. Uh, and then times that by the bottom left alone. So the second one I don't do anything to. Minus, now I leave the top alone. So I'm going to have negative 3x squared minus y. And then I take the derivative of the bottom, which is just 1. All over x squared. There's the quotient rule. So what I, all I have to do now, and then you'll have the right answer, is you take the x equals 2, and every time you see an x, you plug it in to the x's. y equals 0. Everywhere you see a y, which is only this one time right there, that's a 0. And then the dy dx is equal to negative 6. So it's now just a substitution, simplify, and you're done. Okay, hopefully that helped you out on these test prep questions. Good luck on that mastery check.